No one can see a lighthouse without giving a thought to the sea and its constant perils, and to the lives saved by the warning lights of these beacons of our coasts. And of all the unusual occupations of today, lighthouse keeping is one field you might legitimately expect to be reserved for men only, but it isn't. Mrs. Parkinson of Lancashire is a lighthouse keeper in her own right. On the rugged West Lancashire coast, eight miles from Lancaster, Mrs. Parkinson looks after the twin lighthouses of Cocker Sands Abbey. Twice a day, Mrs. Parkinson makes her rounds, and it's a good job she doesn't get dizzy on heights. Morning and evening, she must attend to the lamps of her two charges. Paraffin fueled, their brilliant reflectors throw a beam many miles out to sea. In this work, there can be no break in routine. In rough weather or smooth, the lights must be burning when night falls or when fog cuts visibility to danger point. And if you like an occasional day off work, don't take a job in a lighthouse. When the sea is calm, it's not always easy to imagine how terrible it can be when wind and weather lash it to fury. It is at such times that seamen bless the coastal lights that warn of rocks and shallow water. Those of us who live ashore may often forget all about lighthouses and the folk who look after them. The sailor never does. He knows his safety depends on their reliability. Mrs. Parkinson lives in the Cocker Sands Abbey Light, but she's one housewife whose domestic work must always take second place. She has to let the piano wait and put all the brilliance into the special light reflectors. The pay is not over generous and the monotony is deadly, but the real reward comes from the knowledge that such work as this protects men and ships from the challenge of the sea. To millions of holidaymakers, Margaret brings back memories of a week by the seaside. But thousands who go there annually have seldom been up on the day. There, in the back garden of a small house, is the entrance to the Margaret Grotto. Down a flight of stone steps lies a subterranean temple, a beautiful relic of ancient Britain. It is a mosaic wrought entirely of shells. Little is known about the history of the grotto. It was first discovered by accident only 100 years ago. One theory says that it was originally used by the Danes during their conquest of Britain as a place of worship. shells lighting the walls are believed to have been placed there alive with fish in them. This would account for their present colourful state. The many patterns have a biblical symbolism or are ancient emblems of eastern countries. Although one of Margaret's finest showpieces the grotto's origin and history is obscure, but now, many centuries after it was built, it remains a monument of beauty and art. When the curtain goes up on London's Stars on Ice, but hidden away above the wings is one of the show's most important personalities, the snowmaker. You'll never meet him out front, but if you look in backstage, this is how it works. When the stage snow begins to fall, it's another success for something new in weather control. 
A chemical mixture, the formula is kept secret, is mixed in an old tin bath and then hosed out in front of a powerful electric blower. This synthetic north wind whirls the mixture into flakes and down it comes. In the old days, snow in show business meant cotton wool or chopped up bits of paper. The modern method gives a snowfall you could easily mistake for the real thing. One three minute fall costs 50 pounds, but it's still cheaper than the old way. It dries harmlessly on the skaters' costumes in less than five minutes. For stage and screen producers, the blizzard machine is a welcome addition to the professional bag of tricks, and it's also a boon to the sweeper up. So, next time it snows on the stage, you'll know exactly how it's done.